Before we get started, I just want to remind you that everything that we discuss in this series is available from foxynotel.com forward slash how to, and that includes all of the packs that we create, access to all of the software that we use, and a load of other useful documentation, including links to useful websites as well. So make sure you check that out after the video. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to create your pack files to get your packs started and registered with Minecraft. We're going to look at what the manifest file is, as well as creating a pack PNG or a pack icon and we're going to look at text files as well so that you're ready to start adding all of the information you need in your pack. So in the last video we looked at how to actually get started with all of this in terms of the software you would need and importing your files into a workspace so that you're ready to go and that's where we're at today. So we're using Visual Studio Code again and you can see up here to my left hand side I've got a 2 underscore pack underscore B folder and a 2 underscore pack underscore R folder. Now those two folders correspond to actual folders inside of my Minecraft game. The behavior pack one being underscore B, which is in my development underscore behavior packs folder, and the pack underscore R being in my development underscore resource packs folder. Now the two at the beginning is just the episode number that we're on so that I've got everything in a nice order and I know what I'm doing. So let's get this started because at the moment, both of these are blank, so they're not gonna get registered by Minecraft as having anything useful in them. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click and our behavior pack folder and I'm going to hit new file. I'm going to call it manifest.json or JSON, hit return and that's going to open up on our screen. Now I'm not going to write this file from scratch because that would be completely pointless and a complete waste of time when we've already got the information we need handy to us. If you remember from the last video, we actually linked our Minecraft data files in here. And if we open this up and go to behavior packs and then just pick the vanilla behavior pack, it actually has a manifest.json file which if we drag it over to the right hand side of our screen, we can open up at the same time as our first one. So we can literally select everything, hit control C to copy it, and then switch over to the left hand side and hit control V to paste it. And we've now pretty much got everything we need in there. Although it does need a little bit of tweaking. Now, if you don't have access to these data files, then you can do that from any other behavior pack or resource pack. Just open it up, copy and paste the information and just change what you need to. And the main things we need to change are the UUIDs. Now, the UUID is a unique identifier that Minecraft uses to identify that your pack is different from another pack. It doesn't use the pack name or the description because you might have two packs with the same name. The UUID should always be different. And because it's such a long and random string generated from different numbers letters chances are you're never going to find two the same and the way that we can update this or change it is by using our extensions in our extensions panel i have an extension called uuid generator installed so with that installed you can highlight your uuid right click on it and then click generate a uuid and it will replace it with a completely brand new and completely random one and we're going to do this on the second uuid as well and we're going to hit generate a uuid there too now there's a couple more things we need to change on here. We're not going to worry about the dependencies section right now. We'll do that in a few minutes. The first thing we're going to actually come to our description and we're going to call it pack dot description and the name we're going to call it pack dot name and the version we're going to put version 1.0.0 we always start at version 1 and that way we can increment that up as we go we could start at 001 like it was on that's absolutely fine but my preference is to start at 1 and work my way up from there now the min engine version is actually telling the game what is the minimum version of Minecraft that this pack can run on it's currently set to 1.13 but we're actually in Minecraft version 1.16.220 and I don't know if the pack that we're creating is going to be compatible with previous versions so I'm going to call the minimum engine version 1.16.220 and that way no one will be able to open this pack up in a previous version and risk having compatibility issues. Now for the next section modules I'm going to copy and paste this description in fact to be honest with you we don't actually have to have that description line in there at all we can get rid of it which just means we don't have to worry about it later on we've already updated the UUID and we're going to change the version number so that it matches our one up here so we've got version one there and version one there we're also going to go into our dependencies section and change the version there but we're not going to change the UUID just yet now that we've got that ready, that's our behavior pack almost ready to go. We need to create one for our resource pack. So we're going to right click on the resource pack folder, click on new file, 
And we're also going to call that one manifest.json. Now we could just copy and paste the data from the vanilla pack again into this, but we don't need to. We don't need that anymore. We can actually copy and paste the stuff we've got from our behavior pack in there. So grab your resource pack version and drag it over the right hand side. And then we're going to do control A on our behavior pack. Control C to copy and Control V to paste it over here. So now we've got two identical manifest files, but now we need to update the UUIDs again for our resource pack. So highlight it, click generate a UUID, and the same for the second UUID as well. The other really critical thing you need to change here is the type. It no longer wants to be data, it wants to be resources. With an S, it's plural. Resources, not resource. That tells the game that this is a resource pack and not a behavior pack. Now we're going to look at these dependencies. In order to link these two packs together, to tell the game that these packs go together, they are one pack combined, we need to link them together. And that's where these dependencies come from. If we didn't want to link these packs, if we're just making a behavior pack or just making a resource pack, we would get rid of those dependency parts altogether and just leave it like it is. But when we add this to our game, we want the game to automatically bring in the other part. So if you're in your world settings and you add the behavior pack, you want it to add the resource pack with it as well. Otherwise, all of your entities will be invisible. Likewise, if you add your resource pack first, you want it to drag in the behavior pack as well. Otherwise, you've got all of the textures there, but you won't have any of the entities to play with. So we're going to leave those dependency parts in and we're going to go over to the left hand side, which is our behavior pack. And we're going to take the top UUID from there, hit Control C to copy it, and then come over to our resource pack one and paste it into the de dependencies one. This is now saying that this resource pack is dependent on this behavior pack. And now we're going to do that vice versa. We're going to take the UUID from our resource pack and we're going to put it into our behavior pack one. And now that's saying that our behavior pack is dependent on resource pack. So they're cross dependent on each other. That one relies on that one and that one relies on that one. They work together. And that is it. We've now got both of our manifest files completely done. So now when we go into Minecraft and hit settings, we can go to our global resources and you'll see inside of my packs, we've got pack.name, pack.description. Now this is the one we're working on and that's just to prove that it is actually in the game. There's not a lot we can do with it. If we go to create a new world and then go to our behavior packs, you'll see that we've got pack.name there and in resource packs, we have the pack.name there. And if we add that to our world on resource packs and go into behavior packs and go to active, you'll see it's dragged it in. That's the link in. But we don't want it called pack.name. We don't want it called pack.description. And we don't want that horrible magenta and black cube. We want to put our own file in there and give it our own name. So let's get out of Minecraft and let's sort that out. Now, I use Photoshop for all of my design work and textures. If you don't have Photoshop, there's plenty of free alternatives available. All we're going to do is create a 128 by 128 pixel PNG file. So I've set that up here and I'm going to click create and we're just going to add some images to it. Now, because this pack isn't for anything in particular, all I'm going to do is stick in a bunch of shapes, make them different colors just to suggest that this is a graphic and nothing else and leave it at that. So there we go. We've got a very Windows 3.1 looking pack icon there. What I'm going to do is go to file, save as. I'm going to locate the behavior pack folder that we're working in. I'm going to call it pack underscore icon. And then I'm going to select the PNG from the save as type and click save. And I'm just going to choose smallest file size. It really doesn't matter which one you pick from there because it's a tiny file anyway. So we've now got our pack icon. Coming back to Visual Studio Code, you can see in our behavior pack there, we have our pack icon. I'm going to right click on that, click on copy, and I'm going to right click on the two pack R, the resource pack one, and paste it in there. So we now have that in there, which means that when we're creating our new world in Minecraft, you'll see we now have the graphic next to our image on the behavior pack and the resource pack. So that's worked perfectly. Now we need to make it not say pack.name and pack.description. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could do that directly in the manifest files itself. We could change the description to actually have a description and we could change the pack name to actually have a pack name. And that's a real quick and easy way to do it in the way I've done it for a very long time. But more recently, I've been doing it the proper way. And I'll show you how to do that. In our behavior pack, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it texts. So on our text files, we're going to right click and do new file and we're going to call it languages.json and we're going to open that up. And then we're going to start with some square brackets and we're going to hit return and we're going to put en underscore us. And what that's done is that's now told the game that we have a language file 
called ENUS or the US English language file. And we could add more in there. We could add as many different language files as we want. We could do EN underscore GB and have a British language file. We could have ones for every country in the world. If we go to the Minecraft vanilla resource pack and look at their language file, you can see that they've got all sorts of different language files. But we're only going to concentrate on one because we only want to create one language file. So let's close that, get rid of ENGB, and we're just going to leave ENUS because the majority of my viewers are from the States. So that makes sense to me to do that. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to click back on the text folder and do another new file. And I'm going to call it EN underscore US capitalized in the same way. And I'm going to put dot lang afterwards. Now that is creating a language file, but a language file is basically just a clever text file. A language file will take anything on the left hand side of an equal sign like that and it will look for that throughout the entire game and replace it with whatever's on the right hand side of the equal sign. So if we put tutorial pack 2 because it's the pack for our second episode then that will come up in Minecraft. We'll do the same thing with the pack description as well. So I'm going to copy and paste the words pack.description there so I make sure I spell it right. Hit equals and then just put a pack description. I'm going to save that and go back into Minecraft and now hopefully when we go to create a new world and we look at our behavior packs we should see that our behavior pack name is now tutorial pack 2 and the pack description is a pack description however if we go to resource packs you'll see that the resource pack doesn't have that we need to copy and paste everything we've done into the resource pack let's go back to visual studio code and we're just going to right click our text folder we're going to hit copy we're going to go to our resource pack one right click on that hit paste and now we've got exactly the same files in our resource pack folder, which means when we open Minecraft again and we go to play and create new and create new world, we'll see in our resource packs, we've got my packs, tutorial pack two and behavior packs. We also have to put tutorial pack two. Now, there's one more thing that might be useful to remember when doing this, and that is on your behavior pack file to put a B inside of the bracket there. And that will signify when you're looking at it in game that that's the behavior pack. On our resource pack language file, which we can shift over there so we know it's in resource packs, we're going to put an R in there instead. And that way, in game, we can tell both of those two things apart. Another thing you can do is use text formatting codes like you can in games on sides. If you hit Alt 0167 on your keyboard, you get the little icon that means we're going to be doing some text formatting. And I can put a number after that or a letter to signify it's a different color. Now, tutorial pack B is going to be all in whatever color A signifies. If I do the same thing here and put an R, that resets it back to normal. So the B will be normal and I can do it in the description as well. So let's put an L for a large or bold font size and we're going to do a B to make that a different color and we're going to make description another different color again. We'll maybe give that the color whatever six is. So now if I save that and go back into Minecraft, go to my behavior packs and check out my packs, you'll see we now have the green tutorial pack. A pack is blue and bold and description is yellow and bold. So we can do all sorts of formatting to make our packs stand out and look very nice. And that is literally it. Both of our folders now are ready to go to start adding in all of the wonderful things inside of behavior packs and resource packs. We can start adding in our new blocks, items, entities, custom textures, whatever we want. It's all ready to go. Those folders are there. Minecraft recognizes them as a combined resource pack and behavior pack, and it will read whatever you now put in there in creating your files, which we'll be looking at in the next episode. But before we go to the next episode, Let's look at how we actually convert those files, assuming we've finished our pack now, into a complete working pack that you can give to your friends. And for this, we're going to come away from Visual Studio Code for a second and actually go to the folders themselves. We've got our 2-pack B in our development behavior packs, and we've got our 2-pack R in our development resource packs. We need them both together. And I'm going to put them in a folder that I'm setting up for this tutorial series called 2-pack tutorial. And I'm just going to drop them in there. So I'm going to copy my pack B and I'm going to copy my pack R. So I've got both of those in there next to each other. I'm going to select them both either by clicking on that one, holding control and clicking on the other one, or I can click on that one, hold shift and click on the other one. And then I'm going to right click and using 7-zip, which is a zip program, a program to compress files and put them together, I'm going to click add to archive. Now 7-zip is free. I would definitely recommend downloading it if you haven't already because it's great for this sort of thing. And then we're going to rename the .zip part to .mc add-on. 
Now, .mc add-on is important. That tells Minecraft that inside this file, there is a behavior pack folder and a resource pack folder. If we've just got a resource pack, we would call this .mc pack like that. But because we're adding a behavior pack as well, we're using .mc add-on. So I'm going to compress it as heavily as it can be just to make sure that it is as small as file size as possible, which means sharing it with people is a little bit easier. I'm going to click OK, and that is going to create a tutorial add-on. Now, if I double click that and try and install that in Minecraft, it will fail. But that's because the files already exist in our development folders. So it's going to do import started and you'll see it will fail. Fail to import because it's got a duplicate pack because they already exist. But I will prove to you quickly that this does work by removing those original packs. So I'm going to close Minecraft again. I'm going to go to this folder here. I'm going to delete the two pack B which I can't because Visual Studio is open. So let's close that. Then I can delete the two pack B and I'm going to delete the two pack R. So those files now don't exist in my Minecraft setup. So now when I double click the two pack tutorial, you will see that they should both import successfully. Import started and successfully imported tutorial pack B and successfully imported tutorial pack R. Note that the tutorial pack R has the plain text because we didn't put any of the formatting or the font formatting into that one. So they're now both in the game. Again, we can look at those in global resources in here like this, or we'll be able to find them in the game files. The other thing that you might notice, now a lot of people have pointed this out to me before, saying my packs are broken because they've got this little yellow exclamation sign on it. If I open up the storage section of Minecraft, and I go to my behavior packs or my resource packs, you'll see that this one that we've made has got an exclamation mark on both. And if I click on that exclamation mark, it tells me that the error is that it's missing a dependency. It's saying it can't find the dependency. This is absolutely fine. That's not a problem because we're looking at it on its own. The storage section of this is is basically just showing you what your files are taking up. It's not combining them together. It can only look inside of wherever it's stored. So it can't find the other one within itself to link to it. But when we look at it in global resources, it's absolutely fine. There's no warning. And again, if we go to create new world or go to add this to one of our worlds, you'll see there are no warnings. It's absolutely fine. And when we activate that to our world and go to behavior packs, you'll see it has dragged it in. So they are linked properly. The dependencies are working. So don't worry about that when you see the dependency issue in the global storage, because that doesn't make any difference. That's it for today's little video. That is how to create your behavior packs and resource packs. And you've got everything you need now to get cracking. So in the next video, we are going to get cracking on building that entity like I promised at the last video. And I've got some good plans for you coming up. So make sure that you check out more, subscribe to my channel and like this video and do all of the amazing things. And don't forget, it's all available on my website, foxynotel.com forward slash how to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.